The reason why I bring that up, though, is there are some supervisory committee members that can't help but to get involved in what is within the scope of board responsibilities because they really want to be board members at some point in time. All right. And that's fine. But while you're a supervisory committee member, it's important to stay with stay in your lane. Hello and welcome to Super Tip, the only show dedicated to the education and enrichment of supervisory committee members and audit committee members. My name is Anson Cooley and I'm the owner and principal of Synergy Credit Union Consultants. Before we get started, make sure you register today for the upcoming Q's Supervisory Committee Development Seminar being held September 19th through the 22nd at the Hilton Santa Barbara Beachfront Resort. This year we completely revamped the seminar to ensure that you have both the concept and the skills you need to practically apply what you'll learn as soon as you get back to your institution. Whether or not you're a board member, CEO, internal auditor, or risk manager, you'll benefit from sharing this learning experience alongside your supervisory committee member. Register today. Supervisory committee members, either because of overzealousness or lack of training, often veer outside of the scope of their responsibility. In this next segment, I'm gonna discuss what is outside the scope of your responsibilities as a supervisory committee member. Next, we're gonna talk about what are some of the things that are outside of your scope of responsibilities as a supervisory committee member. There are a lot of things that are outside the scope of your responsibilities as a supervisory committee member. I and mean, as I'm thinking about this, what I wanna share with you is this. In some organizations, the supervisory committee is used as like a farm system for the board, all right? Like basically individuals are taken from the supervisory committee member, from the supervisory committee become the next board members. I don't necessarily like that practice because it kind of diminishes in some ways the true value of what the supervisory committee brings to the organization and what it does is it depletes supervisory committee of the talent that it has and that it needs by taking some of the more experienced individuals off the committee the reason why i bring that up though is there are some supervisory committee members that can't help but to get involved in what is within the scope of board responsibilities because they really want to be board members at some point in time all right and that's fine but while you're a supervisory committee member it's important to stay with stay in your lane um and and you'll never go wrong if you just stay in your lane remember we have first line of defense which is management production second line of defense which is risk management third line of defense which is audit so let's go through some examples of something that is outside of scope and things that i just think that cloud or clutter the committee's agenda going over in my opinion going over monthly the organ changes in the balance sheet of the organization did they make money this month looking at differences between uh what they committed in budget versus what the actual i in my opinion that has absolutely no value for you as a supervisory committee member what does have value is if during an audit cycle you audit the board reporting process that's where you have a dog in the hunt meaning there's a procedure within that particular program where the auditor says hey back in the fourth quarter management committed to having growing loans by x amount or growing income by x amount and we are more than 15% outside of what was committed, budget versus actual. Policy says that anything over 10% needs to be reported in the following quarter. So that auditor will go through that procedure and look for every instance that the budget variance is over what? 10% and then report it and then report it back to you. That's how you become aware, because remember, like we said, management designs the controls, okay, and we test them independently. But you, looking at the report every month, in my opinion, doesn't have a lot of value. Give you another example. Information security 
assessments, not audits, but assessments. So for example, firewall or intrusion detection, in a, in a, just for those of you that don't work, they're talking about IT information security, okay? Monthly, there's reports that could be provided to you that show how many people tried to actually breach into your organization. That is a second line of defense function. Meaning, what are you going to do with that information? You're not management and you're not the board, okay? The only license you have to operate within that scope is within the context of an actual scheduled IT audit, okay? So, you want to make sure that you're focused on audit functions, not risk management functions, which is the second line of defense uh, area. And also, you're not getting too far involved in things like strategic planning. I believe that at a minimum, the chair of the committee should go to strategic planning, but not from a standpoint of providing input because that's out, out of scope but so that the committee can be aware of new products and services and new endeavors that may requisite us to change how we deploy our resources as a committee, okay? So you wanna make sure that you are staying within the lines of your boundaries so that the board doesn't feel, that's how boards and supervisory committees get crossed and they get to kind of uh, being passive aggressive with one another when the supervisory committee starts to kind of erode or step into areas that are outside of scope.